we're going to cover the important topic of how to back up your computer. There are several reasons why you need to do this. One is you could have a hard drive crash and you can lose all your files. Two, you could hit, get hit by a virus like ransomware, which locks up your files and, and forces you to pay for those files or lose them forever, or just simply get hit by a virus that wipes out your hard drive. Also, you could accidentally delete something. We've all done this, and uh, having a backup allows us to be able to bring that back when we need it. So we'll cover uh, how to download and install a program called Paragon Backup and Recovery 16 free. It's one of the higher rated free ones out there and it'll save us a penny or two. We're going to activate that software by creating a Paragon account. Uh, we're going to create and execute a full backup job that should be enough to cover our entire computer if it crashes. And we're going to restore a file from backup as a test to see if what we did actually worked. So we're going to delete a file and bring it back. What you're going to need is an active email address. When you create that Paragon account, you need an account to verify that the email address is correct. And also, you're going to need an external hard drive or a secondary hard drive. Um, you could back it up to your local hard drive that you have now, but if your hard drive fails, it's not going to do you any good. So, let's get started. Let's begin by jumping on Paragon's website to download their software. Paragon offers a lot of tools, one of which is this backup and, re backup and recovery software. So let's click on the download for free. That'll make us jump down to the bottom of the page after we remove this. Jump on down. In most cases, we want the 64-bit. If you're running a 32-bit version of Windows, you'll want that. But let's go with the 64-bit. This is going to be downloading. Uh, for you, it'll probably take three to ten minutes, depending on your connection. For me, I sped it up so we didn't have to wait and watch it. Click on Yes here. And we really should read the license agreement, but no one hardly reads that, so we'll continue on. And I also sped this up as well. It, it'll take, I don't know, probably a good three to five minutes to install it and wait for it to go through the process. Once it's installed, we can click Finish. So it'll create an uh, icon on the desktop here, so we can just double click on that and run it. Click on Yes. And it's going to be looking for what uh, hard drives we have installed, both external and internal, just to make sure it creates an inventory of uh, what we have on our computer. It'll take a little bit. Once it's loaded up, it's going to prompt us with uh, a request to activate. Um, I think you can use it for five days without activating, but we want to activate this so we can use it long term. Uh, chances are you don't have an account, so let's create a Paragon account. You can throw in your first name and last name. I'm just going to use my demo account information at this point. And we'll click, we'll click the Create Paragon Account. That'll go, behi go behind the scenes and generate an email that will be sent to us. So the email that I entered in, it generated an email, sent it to that account. So now I need to open up my Gmail account for the demo and find the email because in there is going to be an activation link. That um, tells Paragon that this is truly an account and it also, they use that to uh, assign you a password. So their password recovery and password assignment process is really kind of the same. So once we log into Gmail here, we're going to see the email that we got from my Paragon. So click on that to open it. And we'll find the activation link here. If we click on that, And it's going to take us to this password reset page. Um, throw in your password here, and that'll assign it. And we can use that to then log into our backup and restore software. So we don't need this page anymore, so let's close that down. Let's sign in with our new credentials. I'm going to use my demo account here again. And we'll sign in. All right, 
that worked. Good deal. All right, so it's going to throw up a uh, kind of an introductory page. I'm just going to step you through it, so we'll skip that. And we're going to create a backup job. So a job is something that will run um, on a scheduled basis. We're going to call this full backup to represent the fact that we're going to back up our entire hard drive. Click Next. And so it shows us the one hard drive we have on this box right here. Um, we can back up the whole computer. We can back up just a disk or a partition on the, on the hard drive. We can back up individual files like documents, music, pictures. Or we can choose uh, specific files that are on our hard drive at this point. Uh, so I'm showing my individual user account. At this point, we're just going to jump back to disk and partition. And we're going to choose this local C disk. That's what I'm interested in choosing. Um, it'll also choose the system boot disk in case we have to restore Windows itself. And I'm going to choose to throw this onto my external hard drive. It's about a half a terabyte, which probably isn't enough. I would recommend getting a one to two terabyte drive. Um, I created a folder called Paragon Backups. That's where I'm going to end up throwing these backups at. It's a good idea. So these backups going to run on a daily basis. It's a good idea to run it two, three in the morning when nothing's happening, and definitely don't run it while you're in your workday or when you're using it. You don't want to think, have things slow down. Also, we're going to enable um, the latest seven backups, so this does an incremental backup. We'll keep the seven latest ones, um, and we'll just click next. We want to create this backup right away, so we're ready to go. And we can click Finish. So that's going to go ahead and start backing up. I've sped this up as well because it'll take probably a good 10 minutes to go through this process. Um, and it's going through your entire hard drive and basically copying things and compressing it to a decent level and throwing it on your external hard drive. So that takes a little bit of time. This took me about 10 minutes or so. All right, so let's, let's see what this created. On my external hard drive, if we look at the Paragon backups, I've got some extra folders here left over from previous tests. So the top one is the one we want. Let's click in on that. And it creates dated folders. And so there's a whole bunch of files underneath here. You see that it ended up being about four gigs worth of space. Um, and those will add up over time, which is why you need a, hard, a larger hard drive. So let's click out of this. Now it's time to experiment. So let's go into a folder that we want to delete some uh, either files or folders from. Uh, typically, for with a fresh install of Windows, there's always something underneath the uh, underneath the pictures directory. So let's look under there. Camera roll that's got nothing in it. Uh, saved pictures that's also got nothing in it. So let's just delete the folders and try to bring those back. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a shift delete here. So there's skipping the recycle bin, they're gone. Let's just pretend we accidentally deleted those. So we're going to go and restore a backup. Let's click next on this. Uh, we're going to choose the backup that we that we uh, created before. Click next. And this is the, so we can either restore the entire hard, the hard drive or we can go back and restore individual files, which is what we're going to do in this case. In this case, so let's click back and let's go to files and folders, and that will allow us to choose which files we actually want to restore from that backup. So let's go into users, tips, and pictures, and we should see with any luck. There's our camera roll and our saved pictures folders. Let's click both of those. Click next. So it's got different options here, restore files to original location, well, overwriting files with identical. So this is in case you don't want to overwrite anything that's already there. You can keep the files intact and you know throw the restore files in there. The top option is going to work if we don't have any files there. And we want them back now, so let's go for it. Sped this up as well. Um, it took longer than I thought it would, but it's bringing our files back, so we're going to be grateful. Okay, we're good. So let's see 
if those files exist now. So let's go into Windows Explorer, open up our pictures, and voila, we've got our two folders. So that's done, and it all worked.